tonight, the injury of a San Antonio police officer leading to the scrutiny of a policy within the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Concerns are being raised over the emergence of fake videos that can make people appear to do or say things that they haven't. Community leaders publicly opposing a proposal to turn an Eastside Church community center into a migrant shelter. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. A chase that resulted in the serious injury of a San Antonio police officer now leading to questions about the Bear County Sheriff's Office pursuit policy. Deputies began this chase when two men in a truck refused to pull over yesterday. During that pursuit, the driver went the wrong way down I-35 on the northeast side. That chase eventually ended when the suspects crashed nearly head on into a car. They were arrested. The SAPD officer injured was there at that Seen because of that crash directing traffic and setting up flares. He was hit by a driver and pinned between his patrol car and a median. He has a serious leg injury tonight. Today, after giving an update on that officer's condition, Police Chief William McManus criticized the chase policies of the Bear County Sheriff's Office. We apologize for uh, some technical difficulties we were having with that audio with the uh, San Antonio police chief. You can see that on our website right now on KSAT.com. We do want to mention that tonight we have learned of a directive sent by the sheriff, Sheriff Javier Salazar, to his agency. That says in part, quote, effective immediately any outside agencies requesting Bear County Sheriff's Office assistance in initiating or continuing a pursuit that by their own policy, the outside agency's officers are not allowed to engage in will be declined, end quote. Now, it is not clear whether this policy would have had any impact on yesterday's chase. Earlier this week, we brought you the pros and cons of artificial intelligence technology. Well, tonight we're explaining deep fake videos created by artificial intelligence. It makes people appear to have said or done something that they did not. Tiffany Huertas with why cybersecurity experts are keeping a very close eye on this. We can't believe everything we see. The Democratic National Committee had experts create a deep fake video to demonstrate the potential threat it could have to the 2020 election. It was shown earlier this year at DEF CON, one of the largest conventions for hackers. This is just one example of how deep fakes work. It's a uh, fabricated video using uh, a, uh, a known individual, uh, maybe a political leader, or maybe even somebody that uh, could be senior in the chain of command uh, in the Department of Defense. Um, uh, activity or unit, if you will. Uh, and so they basically have taken, you know, images, multiple images from the internet, um, if you will, to consolidate um, pictures into a video so they can um, basically provide voiceovers. Cybersecurity companies like IP Secure in San Antonio are racing to beat deep fakes. Jeff Medina, director of business development and cyber strategy, says when dealing with deep fakes, it's more than just the video messages you should be concerned about. Medina says if you click on these videos, you could be subject to ransomware or other types of threats. So the video message in itself, right, can definitely drive. Um, you know, new videos that you'd get right for political affiliations or um, using artificial intelligence, they can gear what they're going to send you via social media or email, et cetera. But definitely they're, the, they're big, the big threat is the nefarious activity that would occur behind the scenes. But who is making these videos? There's a, a broad spectrum, right? It could be anybody from just making um, entertainment videos, right? We, we see things as, as uh, slimy as pornography or folks just making, you know, memes or, or videos that, you know, are funny to put out on social media. But absolutely, um, we have to assume that state actors um, from other, you know, uh, countries that we would consider an adversary are definitely developing new capability to be able to inject in our networks and, and traverse all um, both DOD and intelligence community networks. Medina says you should protect yourself from any possible threats by creating a plan. And I think folks really need to take this serious and Organizations really need to develop a, a user education program, um, whether it be for information assurance, risk management, um, and just making sure that you get your users educated um, so they know what to and what not to click on. On Monday, we take a look at how deep fakes could impact elections and what one Texas senator is doing to prevent any election issues. Myra. 
All right, thanks, Tiffany. You'll see a new flashing light if you drive through one northwest side community. It's one of those speed dial indicators telling drivers how fast they're going. The Braun Station neighborhood along Gilbo Road between Tezel and Bandera Roads has been trying to find a solution to the speeding problem they have had for years now. The hilly street creates some blind spots, making speeding even more dangerous here. It was a long process to get that speed dial indicator. People who live in the area opposed some of the other options like a traffic light. Individuals who will speed uh, no matter what, right? Even though they willingly will break the law. Um, but what we hope is that these speed dial indicators will stop the people who are conscious, who are good citizens from breaking the law because a lot of the speeding that happens, sometimes people aren't aware that they're doing it. Councilwoman Ana Sandoval says the city's public safety committee is working with police to come up with a long term cost effective plan to try to slow down drivers all across the city. 93. That was our high temperature today. Average being 85. Yeah, yeah, another above average day. We were in the 90s pretty much everywhere. Rock Springs an exception at 88. A little bit of a breeze actually picked up locally, but notice how it's just about calm everywhere around us. Very light breeze elsewhere. Here are the numbers right now at this hour 84 in San Antonio, 75 in Kerrville, 83 New Braunfels and 75 in Rock Springs. Wider view shows them similar numbers as you go northward, just a little bit cooler. Lubbock 70, Amarillo 67, not as big of a temperature difference as the past couple of days. The air has, I guess, evened out a little bit, you could say in terms of temperature, but we still have that jet stream right to the north of us. Cooler air to the north of the jet, the warmer and even record breaking air south of the jet and the record breaking includes the southeastern US. So we still have the heat high that's basically planted right over Atlanta, causing more record high temperatures today. But this upper level dip in the flow, we're watching that in the Pacific Northwest and another ripple on the back side of it because that's Monday system that's going to drop in. So this weekend we're talking record challenging warmth, sunny 95 both Saturday and Sunday. And you'll notice a bit of humidity in the air, but then we get to Monday morning and that's when the cold front hits. We'll be near 80 for the high temperature Monday afternoon. A few showers possible, but only 20% chance. A dry north wind really dropping the humidity and you'll notice the lack of humidity and of course the gusty wind throughout the day. So this weekend still summer like good pool weather record challenging heat and then we completely flip things around have the weather just takes a 180 as we get into Monday and check this out Tuesday morning and even Wednesday morning right near 60 for afternoon high temperatures and very low humidity then and get this if one front isn't enough for you we're looking at the prospects of another by about this time next week. Just because you see something trending online doesn't mean it's accurate. At the end of every week, the Associated Press puts together a roundup of some of the most popular but completely untrue stories and images of the past several days. Let's take a look. Here's the first claim we are fact checking tonight. A photo shows protesters burning an Iranian flag in Baghdad today as Iraqis held anti government protests around the country. Here are the facts on this. While the AP reports that there have been spontaneous demonstrations, mostly by people wanting more jobs jobs and an end to government corruption. This photo was taken more than a year ago. The results of the protests taking place right now have been violent. However, dozens of protesters have been killed. Here's another claim tonight. NASA scientists say climate change is mostly driven by factors unrelated to human activity. Articles circulating online suggest that NASA has rejected human responsibility for climate change and has instead attributed the phenomenon to variations in the Earth's axis and tilt. But those articles are wrong. NASA has a web page dedicated to explaining global climate change. It says in part that a rise in global temperatures is extremely likely to be the result of human activity. And a NASA research scientist sent the Associated Press an email saying scientists at the agency believe as much as 100% of current warming could be caused by greenhouse gas emissions, which humans have emitted a lot of. The Church of Sweden has declared environmental activist Greta Thunberg the successor to Jesus Christ. But this isn't true. This claim can be traced back to a tweet by one of the church's parishes, which described the Swedish teenager as Christ's successor. The claim was widely debated and criticized at the time, and the parish then apologized. But the Church of Sweden sent the AP an email saying, quote, no, Church of Sweden has obviously not proclaimed Greta Thunberg as the successor of Jesus Christ, end quote.
You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. Let's turn now to some of the biggest stories people are talking about tonight. Victims of Tropical Storm Imelda in six Texas counties will receive federal assistance. Today, President Donald Trump granted Governor Greg Abbott's request for a federal disaster declaration. People living in Chambers, Harris, Jefferson, Liberty and Montgomery and Orange counties whose homes were damaged during last month's storm can apply for up to $35,500 per household in assistance. According to Governor Abbott, nearly 900 homes were destroyed destroyed and uninsured in those six counties. The latest on the presidential impeachment inquiry now, the three House chairmen overseeing that investigation have subpoenaed the White House. Democrats are asking for a wide range of information about the president's actions in this Ukraine controversy. The White House released a statement addressing the subpoena, calling it a waste of time and taxpayer dollars. Last week, House Democrats launched the impeachment investigation after a government whistleblower disclosed President Trump's call with the president of Ukraine, in which he repeatedly pressed him to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son. American hiring is still strong amid signs the global economy is slowing down. The U.S. added 136,000 jobs in September. The unemployment rate was 3.5 percent. That's nearly a 50-year low. The number of discouraged workers or people who've stopped looking for work also fell by more than 100,000 in September. Let's find out what's trending on this Friday night on KSAT.com with RJ Marquez. All right, Myra. Yeah, busy day today on KSAT.com. And we start here first with really some pretty cool news for Spurs fans and also Rampage fans. The AT&T Center announced today that they have a ton of new value prices and a value menu for fans who are going to be going to the games. Okay. Yeah. Are any new food items or anything that's kind of different that stands out? Yeah, so there's a couple of different food items as well. They got a bunch of new like concession areas and things like that. Some of these uh, deals include a uh, hot dog for $2.50 um, and so small nachos two fifty as well. So okay. yeah, anyone who goes to a game, hey. they know it can be really pricey. Yeah, in a stadium, <laughs> that's not that bad. It's really not Yes, so uh, we have the full rundown of all the different things that the AT&T Center is doing this year on our website, ksat.com. Cool. All right, moving on here. Story that has been uh, making the rounds. A Dallas cheerleader, a high school cheerleader, this young lady saved the life of a boy who was choking during their homecoming parade. Oh, wow. Yes, this is pretty awesome. Her name is uh, Tyra Winters. She's a Rockwall High School student, and uh, she apparently was on the float. This was during the parade. Saw this two-year-old boy uh, choking and actually just jumped off and went to uh, went to go save him. Did the Heimlich maneuver oh, on him. Oh, my goodness. Yes, so was uh, this boy in the crowd, this little kid? He was in the crowd with his mom, and then his mom kind of noticed that, uh, his, uh, that her baby was having some trouble breathing, and yeah. so she kind of uh, started to get a little bit worried while this cheerleader just kind of jumped into action and I mean save this boy's life it's that pretty is, impressive yeah stuff. that is yeah. so awesome yeah. and shows you how important it is to have mm -hmm. those skills right yes absolutely and uh, I think here the uh, the mom said in our article in ksat.com that uh, she was going to start to train her entire family for CPR purposes and Heimlich maneuver and all that so it was pretty cool uh, we have a video on our website which shows the uh, cheerleader Tyra meeting with the young man and the mother and the family so it's pretty cool oh, that's great stuff there. Yeah, yeah very cool Cool. Yeah, check it out on our website. All right, for Harry Potter fans, there's several bars here in the San Antonio area, mostly downtown, that are going to be transforming into Hogwarts houses. This is all going to take place October 24th, so set your calendar. And uh, some places here that I've been to, uh, La Roca, Blue Box, so a lot of popular, really cool venues here. Okay. Going all out all right. for Harry Potter. So it'll be Gryffindor. Yeah. <laughs> 
um, Slytherin, Slytherin, Voldemort. I think I'm not supposed to I say like that name. Is it, that's these Harry are the buzzwords I I know from Harry Potter. Muggle. And fans yeah. at home are just going, please stop talking. Just stop talking. Yeah, we'll let you guys go uh, check this story out <laughs> on our website. And uh, those are the stories that are trending on our Friday night. All right, thanks, RJ. Thank you, Myra. We'll be right back.